Just as it's a significant difference between a life jacket meant for coastal cruising and the ones you need for offshore sailing, it's a big difference doing buddy sailing between islands and going offshore. And to make it worse, like in previous episode, discovering your buddy boat is not even close to being seaworthy or prepared for the task. So I'm going to share more details and why I call this a big mistake. It's a problem because his VHF is so poor. I'm also going to talk about towing other boats as this was something I actually offered my buddy boat. And it also comes with not only a risk but with liability as well. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I'm asking for permission to enter the breakwater. I'm towing another sailboat into Shelter Bay Marina. Over. After exhausting sail from San Andreas with a threatening hurricane and working hard to get my buddy boat out of the danger zone, it was an unbelievable good feeling to have the anchor set and just go to bed. Some hours of sleep later, I was ready to check in to Panama again. Very happy to see not only my buddy boat anchored, but also one of the boats left behind in San Andreas that had changed his mind and also escaped the hurricane. Just a few steps from the dock to the vanish. It's almost on the dock. And then it tangled with other yachts. And next one come in here right on the dock. It's crossway. It's all the boats. Totally then, all the boats. Needless to say, it was a good call to get out of there. And very happy to know all my friends are safe. The next one between the vanish and the next two boats crashing, keep crashing, that's all. So that's the situation. Yeah, well, this boat drag four anchor, four anchor. Even, I guess. Ah, the boat have come together. So it's, here. it's a total mess. We have a total mess here. And before being here in the first place, this yacht is another great example of crew willing to take a huge risk going offshore with a yacht not being seaworthy. This was before another hurricane in this region and the crew abandoned this yacht at sea and of course let it adrift. After getting all these video clips from San Andreas, it made me really thankful for having Be Free nice and shiny safely anchored here in Bocas del Toro. And even was so lucky to have this big shipment on board in good time before I had to leave San Andreas. Most of this is for my buddy Rick Moore on Sophisticated Lady that's been waiting for this here in Bocas del Toro. Yeah. It's time to leave this bike back to Rick. I'm now in Boca del Toro. Um, I have a lot of things to move over to Sophisticated Lady. And after some rest and checking in to Parma, it for sure is time for some reflections and evaluation of the escape from Hurricane Julia. Let's take a step back to San Andres to learn from my mistakes, but also from my success in early planning and predictions. My episodes are close to real time, and for those of you watching episode 115, remember I shared how I looked at things at a quite early stage. I showed you that I was already looking into taking advantage of the front system for a fast sail down south to Panama because I already had some expectations to what could come, at the same time giving advices to friends via satellite. One boat I advised to start up engine and get around the north point of Colombia and sail south to safety. The other one I advised to take cover in Curaçao. This was as early as end of September, beginning of October, when most people I talked to believed the path would swing north just as the previous one only a few weeks earlier that hit Florida hard. 
But to me, this system had too many similarities with Hurricane Iota, and I was already preparing for my own exit, as I believed it would hit San Andres straight in the face. Anyway, it's gonna be interesting uh, next few days because uh, luckily my friends uh, have taken my advice and are taking cover in uh, Curacao. I might be wrong and I sure hope I'm wrong uh, because I don't want that to happen to this beautiful island. But uh, I'm not planning on staying here finding out if it's just a tropical storm or which kind of category of hurricane it will be. Now, three weeks later, we have the blueprint, and just as I expected. But this is not my point here. My point is to show paying attention to weather, and that I trusted my experience gave me quite good time to plan for the right thing. Sailing south. Being at the northern hemisphere, sailing south is the right thing to do, if possible. And sailing north, if you are in the southern hemisphere. As I illustrate here, the hurricane spinning different depending if you're north or south of equator. And those of you that been around here for a while know I don't play around with safety and always make sure that everything is in good condition, giving me a green light to go. I've been out one night before and know the importance of having not only everything in working order but also backup solutions like extra sails. I have uh, obviously my mainsail and my Genoa, they are all good, um, <laughs> ready to fly. But I also have prepared an uh, extra set of sails here. So I believe it's fair to say I have done my homework with weather. B3 is seaworthy and I have pretty good margins on my side, knowing her potential under sail and even by engine if necessary. So where did this go wrong and why did I say accepting to better sail was a big mistake? Because obviously I was ready to go. Normally I don't do body sailing because it's just too much hassle being a solo sailor. I have my own schedule and sleeping pattern, meaning my focus is to get as much rest as possible during the entire sail, as I only sleep in 20 minute intervals. So already here it's a challenge when we talk about overnight sail offshore. Another challenge is different boat speed. As I showed in the two episodes, buddy sailing with my friend Kylie, here I had slowed down for having a video of B3. But in light winds, she was faster than me. From 18 knots and above, I sailed much faster than her. Except from the social part of buddy sailing, even this time it actually had a reason. But Kylie is a good sailor and we agreed of only do day hopping towards Martinique just in case something should happen with her mast. If you watched earlier episodes from Grenada, you also know I was recommending her to sail with me to Martinique to have her rig fixed, as my opinion it was far from good even though she just had a full refit. So I offered to go alongside with her all the way to Martinique, to have it fixed and only to stay as a safety boat on her side. In general, her boat was in great condition, but rigging was not safe and even turned out to be worse than imagined. Uh, what do we got here? Um, it's difficult to explain or quantify what we have here. Um, we have, maybe we have people who don't really know how to do their job, or we have people who just don't care about anything about risking other people's lives. Because this has been just mounted completely wrong. Um, and you can see. So here buddy sailing was for a reason. We planned our sail based on our understanding of the situation and also avoided sailing at night, only to have the margins on our side. And luckily both of us made it safe to Martinique. In this case, however, when agreeing having a buddy boat following me to Parma, it was a different game. My mistake in retro perspective can be summarized very easily. First of all, I did not know their sailing skills or level of competence, nor did I know anything about their boat or the status in terms of maintenance. It's owner's responsibility to make sure the boat is seaworthy, and it's the captain's responsibility to not take a boat out if it's not seaworthy. 
There's a lot of things you can get away with only doing day sailing in coastal waters. But offshore sailing is a different ball game. Next time something like this will be my checklist before accepting buddy sailing offshore. As I said, normally I don't do buddy sailing, but if so, I like to know what I'm dealing with before being offshore. And if you ever plan on hitchhiking or crewing on a boat you don't know, this checklist could be of value even for you. As lots of sailors cruising around with dangerous riggings, it's nice to know replacement every 10 to 15 years is normal, especially if doing offshore sailing. Any serious captain taking on board guests, hitchhikers or long-term crew should appreciate these questions as it shows your focus in safety. A captain not willing to discuss this, you should not go aboard. And for me, meaning not willing to do offshore buddy sailing. If I only had used my experience and this checklist, I would already at this stage understand the critical lack of equipment. It's seriously not often I meet sailors willing to go offshore without functional navigation system and functional VHF. This is kind of key elements in understanding offshore sailing. Cruising speed is always a topic when buddy sailing. Normally a 50 footer production yacht should have no problem reaching at least 5 knots. Remember displacement speed should be around 8 to 9 knots. However, a critical information that did not reach me before leaving San Andres was the fact their engine was not capable of more than between 1.5 and 2 knots. Also, the owner had failed in providing money for diesel, meaning they did not leave topped up and not even jerry cans as backup. So with today's information, it's fair to believe the entire boat would fail on all safety points. So if I only knew half of the story before leaving San Andreas, this boat and its crew would get a red light from me, no matter how much I like to help out. Buddy sailing normally means you want to stay within sight of each other, or at least having the ability to communicate. Obviously we failed in both staying inside and within radio reach not only once but several times. And here is the key element of realizing I had made a gigantic mistake. Not because I had any liability accepting buddy sailing nor did I have any responsibility. Captain is responsible for own ship no matter, even if buddy sailing goes wrong. Being stubborn and not giving up on this boat was a difficult but necessary decision, not easy to explain for those who not was in my situation. But I'm gonna try to give you my strongest arguments not only for turning back time after time, but also offering a toll. First challenge to surface was the fact their VHF was in a very poor condition, and that we had no other options for communication. It's a problem because his VHF is so poor. Um, and now he sailed uh, towards Nicaragua. Later, even understanding they had no other working instruments, no radar and only an iPhone to navigate with. Low on diesel because the owner of the boat had not provided funds for topping up and even not having reserved diesel. The fact the engine was in very poor condition and it says also a lot about the risk this captain is willing to take. At this stage I realized this boat is far from being seaworthy for offshore sailing. And if this crew with this boat was trapped in the hurricane this would have a guaranteed fatal outcome. And as a best case scenario my buddy boat story most likely would be similar to this story. Or even worse, plenty of similar stories with fatal outcome as well. They left me no choice because a crew not understanding the situation with a boat being so far from seaworthy, they started to look bad in terms of having the margins on our side. Of the situation, then I basically, I don't know what to do. Either I tow you or I leave you. 
Okay, okay, let, let me see what, what, what is going on and let me see what the solution is. You have no liability when bury sailing. However, leaving a boat mid-sea knowing the situation is obviously questionable. Hence the fact I offered to take them under tow. But now we are moving over to a different game. Once you throw over a line, you are liable also for the boat you take under tow. My insurance covered this, but no insurance do. Also, this is not easy and tempting to say like they do on cinemas. Don't try this at home, as it may look easier than it is. Remember, it's done by professionals. It's not possible to teach this in a short video, but one key element is to have much longer towing line than you might think. Also, the different operations between being offshore and in case you have to bring the boat all the way into the marina. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I'm asking for permission to enter the breakwater. I'm towing another sailboat into Shelter Bay Marina. Over. Shortening in the towing line and take the boat alongside. But this has to be done in calm seas where it's no waves. Or you could risk damaging both boats. I truly understand and appreciate the concerns in lots of comments in my previous episode when I offered a tow. But please remember, I have thousands of hours doing this in all weather conditions. Anything from small passenger ships to Viking ships, and of course the famous Contiki balsa raft scene in the movie. Offering a tow was a calculated risk versus benefit decision, because we started to be short on time for the incoming hurricane. Our margins were getting smaller. Still, for myself and my boat, I had plenty of time to escape. But the mistake was accepting buddy sailing with people not only willing to risk their own life, but putting me in a very difficult position. So next time I will not assume a boat is seaworthy, only because it's in weekly charter with a paid crew. This was my big mistake. And if you're a hitchhiker jumping aboard different yachts, my advice is to learn from my mistake here. Don't assume a yacht is seaworthy only because they are planning on an ocean passage. Ask questions not only about the yacht, but also about the crew. One life, sail it wisely. It's been my motto since I was pretty young. And uh, this kind of... Um, is a red thread through all my things, what I do, uh, what I'm sailing. And I hope to share the difference between coastal sailing, weekend day sailing and offshore sailing, because it's a big difference. So, but that's uh, enough said for this time. Um, really hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you haven't already, I would be very happy to see you subscribe. Then it's uh, not much more to say than uh, stay safe, stay healthy, be free. Cheers. Singing my